scripture comes from Acts, the Acts of the Apostle, and we'll be reading from the second chapter, starting with verse 1 and going through verse 21. Listen to the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phygria and Pamplona, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You know, today is Pentecost, and I look through my closets, and I don't have any red. I just don't wear it. And so I got out my stole that uh, was crocheted for me when I was ordained. Obviously, it's been a few years since I was ordained. This has stretched so much that it's down to my uh, ankles, and so I didn't want uh, to wear this today for fear of tripping myself up, but you will give me credit for wearing red on Pentecost, I hope. Thank you, I appreciate that. So Pentecost is something that we celebrate every year. It is the birth of the church. Our scripture today talks about rushing wind, tongues of fire, and men who couldn't before speaking in languages they did not know. The coming of the Holy Spirit. You have to wonder something. How long had God been planning this party? This is the day we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church, the holy 
Catholic, Apostolic, Universal Church. And every year when we celebrate Pentecost, we celebrate the day that God poured out His Holy Spirit on all flesh, just the way He promised through the prophet Joel. That's the way that happened 2,000 years ago. In this day, however, we think of the Spirit in that still, small voice. And that's what I want to talk about today, how God speaks to us and gifts each of us as individuals. And we often miss the full significance of what God has given us. And I think I'm, I've got an illustration here that will help you with that. There was a man named Yates who during the Depression owned a sheep ranch in far west Texas. He didn't have enough money to pay the mortgage. In fact, he was forced like many during the Depression to live on government subsidies and each day, as he tended his sheep, he worried about how he was going to pay his bills. One day, out of the blue, a seismograph crew showed up and said they'd like to drill a test well because there might be oil on his land. Could they drill that test well? And a lease was signed, and the drilling began. At 1,115 feet, they hit black gold. The Yates Field was born, and guess what? Mr. Yates owned all the mineral rights. Think about that. He owned the land with all the minerals. He had incredible potential, but he had not realized it. And I think sometimes we're like that. We feel poor and helpless, and we're unaware of that extraordinary power that's available to us, power that's lying just below the surface in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls. You know, I think each of us has had our very own day of Pentecost, that day when we ask Jesus to be our Savior, that day when we ask forgiveness for our sins, and God sent His Holy Spirit to dwell in us and with us. Pentecost tells us the good news that our humanity, though it's ruined and it's distorted in all our distrust, our humanity has been restored in Jesus Christ. That Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that animated Jesus' life, that united Him to God the Father, who empowered Him to be fully the human image of God that's now shared with us. So all the voices of all the different languages become a chorus of praise and a community is born, the church. And we heard about the rush of wind and the fire and all that, but these days we still hear God's voice. We still hear the Spirit. Some people hear it when they listen to the wind. Some in the beating wings of birds. Others, the rustling trees. When I think of the Spirit, I will always resonate with the way she is portrayed in the shack. If you read that book, very popular about a decade ago, 
William Young, who was the author, wrote that the Holy Spirit, he named her Sarah Yu, seems to shimmer in the light. And it was easier to see her in your peripheral vision than to try to look at her directly. I think of that shimmer as we read our call to worship this morning. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. And the spirit helps us worship. The, ga the disciples gathered to worship and as they were worshiping, the noise and the wind and the flames came and they were filled with power. As we worship, the Spirit comes to us, but the Spirit comes as it wills. You know what God has given us in the Spirit? It's more than strength and support and teaching and, and comfort. It's more than joy and peace and kindness and patience. And those are wonderful, wonderful things. But God also gives each of us individually a set of gifts that are designed for building up the body of the church. God gives each of us individual gifts for the individual ministries to which we are called. So what gifts do you have? What gifts has God poured out upon you so that you may be the hands and feet of Christ to serve God, to serve your neighbor in the way God intended? I don't want any of us to ever feel like poor Mr. Yates. He considered himself poor and needy, and he was sitting on an oil field. Folks, we're sitting on an oil field. And suddenly from heaven came the sound of the rush of a violent wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them and all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, although the disciples had been waiting, they were in no way prepared for what happened. The event described in our scripture reading Folks, that had to be a wild one. What would we do if that happened to us this morning? By the reports of the folks who were involved, who wrote about it, I think that we can be sure that no one expected what they got. In the book of Acts, as we read this part of the book of Acts about Pentecost, but also other things. In Acts, getting spiritual means getting in touch with the Spirit of God. After waiting, as Jesus told them to do, the disciples received power. God's Word was still creating. God's Word is still creating. So would you like to get spiritual? Would you like to open up your life, the life that God has given you, the breath that God has given you to the possibility of the spontaneous and the dramatic and the surprising? One big surprise for us is that we can help the Spirit's spontaneity.
We need to establish and develop spiritual habits. The disciples had done that by establishing and continuing the habits of meeting together for worship, for fellowship, for study, and for prayer. The disciples on this day of Pentecost, they had been coming to the temple day after day, waiting for the Spirit. And they came back to the temple day after day, after the Spirit had come. They established spiritual habits. And after the Spirit had come, Peter preached, and the people, being made sensitive to the things of God, they were cut to the heart, and they repented. And they were baptized and received into the church that very day the Spirit had indeed come to them. So remember your Pentecost. Remember that God has gifted you for work of the kingdom. Gifts are to be used in the work of God. When we authentically serve God as God intends us to serve, our church is transformed. Our world is transformed. And yes, we too are transformed into the, cre into the creatures that God intended for us to be. I've been intrigued by a sign I saw on All Things Facebook. It says, a disciple is someone who has moved from being the recipient of the church's mission to being responsible for the church's mission. I want to say that again. A disciple is someone who has moved from being the recipient of the church's mission to being responsible for the church's mission. Next week, I want to talk about how the Holy Spirit makes each of us disciples, and each of us with our own spiritual practices. Because we are all on a journey. We may be moving down the road, and we may be in a season of standing still. Whatever it is we are doing, we are doing it with the Holy Spirit. What is it that God is calling you to be? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.